welcome back for another music theory link. In this video, I'm going to be talking about metric modulation. If that sounds like something you'd like to learn more about, then stick around because this is the video for you. Modulation is a term that we should be familiar with in music. Usually we apply that to changing keys. That is, you start out in one key, introduce some chromatic pitches, and we find ourselves in another key. So it implies the gradual shift from one thing to another. When we're talking about metric modulation, it's pretty much the same concept. We're doing a gradual shift from one thing to another. In this case, we're going to start in one meter, and we're going to use some sort of set relationship to arrive in another meter. So let's see how this works. So what you see before you is a piece of music in which we have music going along in one meter, in this case 3-4 time, and then it shifts to another meter, 6-8 time. But there's no instruction telling me how to make that shift from the 3, 4 to the 6, 8. And this is where metric modulation comes into play. This is a very basic form of metric modulation. That is, I need to indicate the relationship between my 3, 4 beat and my 6, 8 beat. So I have two possibilities. I could say that the beat stays the same, in which I would mark it like this, where I have my beat note, the quarter note, being indicated as being equal to the new beat note, the dotted quarter note. And so really what's happening here is I'm changing the speed of the division underneath the beat. So for example, if I start out with, here's my beat, and my division should be 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. I'm going to take, I'm going to change that division, but I'm going to keep this beat going at exactly the same speed. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So my meter, or my division, the shift, if it happens in time, is going to sound like 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And then, of course, I put the rhythm on top of that. Now, the other possibility for doing this is keeping the division of the beat constant and not the beat itself. So the beat is going to change, but not the division of the beat. So I would mark it like this, where I have the note value, the eighth note, representing the division of the beat in 3-4 time, becoming an eighth note, the division of the beat, in 6-8 time. So if my 3-4 is still at the same speed, what I need to do is count the number of divisions to create my new beat. So notice how when I do this this time, my beat is going to change. 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. I modulated from a 3, 4 to a slower 6, 8 by keeping the division of the beat constant. So for the purposes of just learning how to do this, we're probably going to keep our relationships fairly simple. Although keep in mind that there are all sorts of complex relationships that we could do to enact a metric modulation. So for example, I could take the speed of a division of a triplet in my original meter and turn that into the division of a duplet in the new meter, or change it into the, into the beat level of the new meter, in which case I'd be speeding up an awful lot. There are all sorts of possibilities that you can do on this one. So for now, practice the easy ones, where we take the beat and we keep it constant, or we keep the division constant between the two meters. And then after that, you can start working on more complex ones. So now if I have to figure out how to actually do one of these things, if I take a look at a rhythm, you'll see it now on your screen, and I see that it starts in 4-4 time, marked on Dante, and I see that measure 2 is in 6-8, and I notice that I have the indication that the division of the beat is going to stay constant. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is practice my transitions between meters. I'm not concerned about the rhythm yet. I'll worry about that in a little bit. First, I just want to practice my transition between meters. I notice also that every time I switch meters, there's no further indication. When you see that, that means that the relationship is going to stay constant throughout the entire piece. So, so throughout this whole thing, the division of the beat should be the same. So I'm going to start by practicing how I'm going to get from my 4-4 four, four to my 6-8, and it's going to sound like this. 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2
I now have a feel for how the meters are going to interact with each other. Now I can start working on putting the rhythm on top of those meters. That is making sure I'm feeling how the rhythm accentuates that change of meter from 4-4 four, four to 6-8 and back. So I'll take a look at that and then when I'm ready to go, I'm going to clap my beat and I'm going to say the rhythm. So here we go. I'm going to count a measure of 4-4 four, four before I start performing it. Da, 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 da. Now the other thing I can do with this is just to practice, just to have a little bit of fun with it, See if I can do the opposite relationship. So instead of keeping the division of the beat constant, I'm going to now read this as if I'm keeping the beat constant between the two meters. It's going to change the feel of the rhythm quite a bit. So first I want to practice the how I'm going to feel the meters. And it's going to sound like this. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, 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 one, two. So now I have a sense of how the two meters interact with each other. Now it's time to put the rhythm on it. Here we go. Again, I'm going to count out a 4-4 measure before I come in. And that's all there is to it. Well, that does it for this video. If you found it helpful, please like it. Feel free to leave constructive comments below. And as always, make sure you subscribe to my channel for the latest Music Theory Bites as they become available. Until next time.